Last time on Babs Bear Talk. I'm right. I made that pasta thing for a show today, Roar. Okay. You posted it already? No, that's gonna go up like three weeks from now. Oh, okay. Do you think this is gonna come back? It's coming already. It's coming? So you green in between? Oh yeah, I do. See the little green in between, guys. Yeah, there we go. It's just because we can't water as we want to, huh, babe? Look the drought. Ask her! <laughs> it's you know, Friday! Friday! It's Friday! I've heard of it, but I don't what know. What the hell is that. it? I don't know what the hell it is. I thought it was closed. It's not closed. Right? And look who's here! Damien! Like grandma used to say, the little Chinese one! <laughs> let's go, people. Let's go, people. I was gonna wait um, till I packed a couple of those boxes before I sat down and had this little chit chat with you guys, but the compressor's not on yet. There are no mechanics back there making noises with their air tools. And so pretty much I can get this done quickly and then get to work. So I believe that it was Schubert that said it in a song. He said, death gives you liberty. And I always used to think about that song because that's one of my songs that I learned when I was being trained vocally. And now I understand it. With mommy's death, I really understand it. Mommy is free. That's her liberty because she doesn't have anybody controlling her anymore. She doesn't have any debts. She doesn't have any sickness, no pain. She's good, especially if you believe in God. You know, she's good. So for us, the ones that are left behind, of course, we're grieving. So that's not the liberty. But the liberty that I feel like I've gotten over mommy's death is just seeing who's there for me and who's not there for me. And a lot of mom's friends have been awesome. They've been so awesome. They've called and checked on us even now when it's almost a month since mommy died. Mommy died on the 7th. Today's the 2nd. And um, there's like maybe eight of them that really have checked in on me and checked in on my sister. And I think they cling to me more because I'm the older one and I'm more easygoing and stuff like that. But they check in on, and, and when they check in with me, they're like, please tell your sister, you know, we're checking in on her too. And, um, my cousin Troy, the one that preached at the service, he's been awesome with sending texts right at the right time. <laughs> and um, he knows, of course, because he's, he's an elder in the church. He's a minister. So, but anyways, um, I'm, I'm going to get right into, you know, who hasn't been there for me. Joe's people. Honestly, Joe's people. Now, you guys may or may not know that I, I guess I'm estranged from Joe's mom. But there's no bitterness, no fight, no anger. I just kind of shut down and pulled away years ago because I, I really like Joe's mom, but I just found, the, I found her not to be confidential. Like if she tells me something and she says, don't tell Joe, blah, 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 blah. I won't tell Joe, even though he's my husband, because I'll keep that confidence. I mean, of course, if she's in danger, I'm going to have to tell him. But little petty things, no. Why stir up the pot, right? But she doesn't do that. It doesn't go both ways. Like if I tell her something, she'll go right back and tell everybody else. And we don't ever hear any of her other kids' business, but they know all of our business. You know, so I just didn't like it anymore. And I just told her, you're not confidential and I don't have anything else to speak with you about because the only thing that we can discuss would be the weather. And that's get, get that gets pretty boring. You know, that that's how I treat people that I don't have any confidence in. I just talk about the weather. Oh, how about that sun today? Oh my God, how about 100 degrees? Oh, it's raining. You know, and that's all you talk about. So, you know, we really haven't spoken since 2010. And I've been happier for it, I'll be honest with you. Joe has a relationship with his mom that I totally promote. Go, go, go see your mom. But um, I don't have to, you know, deal with it. My kids go once in a blue moon. They've never been close with her because she's never been close with them. You know, she has a lot of grandkids. Like Joe's dad said one time when Joe says, do you love your grandbaby's dad when he came to visit? And I'm sure he didn't mean to be mean. But he said a, a Belizean phrase where he said, I have grand picnic like dirt. You know, so it means like I have so many grandkids, like what's so special about your three, you know? And so um, Joe's mom hasn't really treated them like that. When Joshua was first born, they adored him. And that's because he was the first grandchild born in America. And so that was a big deal for them. And so they adored him. And I think certain family members adore Jory. And then I don't really know who cares about Jada, honestly. <laughs> I don't really know. 
I'm not trying to be mean, guys, but you know, you can only tell by how people show you stuff, right? So anyways, since my mom's passing, Joe's sister in Belize, Glenda, she's always been a sweetie. She doesn't have any way of getting in touch with me, but she's told her daughters to give me condolences. So that's fine. Her two daughters that have had connections with my mom, they came to Facebook immediately and they went privately and they gave me condolences, which is fine. Uh, Joe's nephew's wife, which is um, that same sister that I'm speaking about, son's wife, she had a lot of connection with my mom because in the past few years, the minute my mom arrived in Belize, that girl, Ruth, would be the first person she would call from Joe's side of the family because she would say, come pick up the diapers and the chucks for the boy. That's for Joe's disabled um, nephew. And so um, she she learned about it a week late because the girls didn't tell her and she's not always on Facebook. And I called her and I said, Ruth, I haven't heard from you. Did you know that mommy passed? And she said, I just now learned this morning and I was devastated. And you know, I'm the first person she calls as a point of contact when she comes and I'm not going to hear her voice anymore. And she was such a darling. And the day that my mom died, Joe called and told his mom. She gave him condolences but didn't tell me anything. And I think it bothered Joe because she didn't even tell Joe to tell me. And I, I told her, I said, did you call and tell your mom? Because my mom and Joe's mom used to get along fine. You know, and I said, did you call and tell your mom? And then he's like, yeah, I did. And then he didn't say anything else, so I kind of figured she didn't say anything to tell <laughs> to tell me. And then a few days later, I think, you know, I think Joe had a talk with her about it. And then she was just like, well, she was so distraught, I didn't know what to say. And, and so then on the day that we buried her, she called and she said, just tell her to be strong and I'm praying for her. I'm not going to cry. And Joe says, tell her yourself, mom, tell her yourself. And I think Joe was really mad. And so she came on the phone and she told me she was very sweet, very endearing, very sweet. And said that she wished she could be there. She has her own health issues, you know. I wish I could be there. Um, as a matter of fact, she just came out of like a rehab to take care of a wound because she's very much a diabetic. I wish I could be there for you guys, but just know I'm, that I'm praying. And she, I, I believed her. She was very sincere, very endearing. And since my mom, since that day, she's called and checked. Um, I spoke with her, I think, a couple more times. The conversation was not strained. Like I said, we had no fight, no animosity, no bitterness. It's just that I, you know, if you're causing too much havoc for me, I just kind of move on. I, I, I can't deal with this stress. And then um, that's it. No one else. No one else in Joe's family. Joe's sister, the other one that came to stay, stay with us at the airport when we were leaving Belize, when we went in March. Since then, she's come to America for a quick trip. She called Joe to say hi, not once. Did she say, tell Barbara I'm sorry? She and I don't have any issues. Um, his brother that came to greet us at the airport too, you know, they came and stayed with us at the airport until we left for a flight. We we talked with them at that little church when we went to visit Joe's sister when, when, we, when we went for uncle's funeral. The one that looks like Joe. Nothing out of him or his wife. And um, I think I expected something out of them. They've been to all my mom's parties. Joe has a brother that lives here that I'm estranged from where we didn't have a fight but I don't think I want him in my life and um, I don't think I'm bothered with the fact that he didn't send condolences because I think that would open the door of opportunity for him to come back to my life and I don't I don't really want that just move on that come move on so but yeah that gives me liberty to know who I should associate with after this you know and it's not that I'm have a that I have a scroll and I'm taking names and numbers it's just that I, I I can't deal with people who are not for me if you're not for me move on move on you know my mom and my aunt Kathy has never gotten along well they used to get along back in the olden days and then something happened and it was a big rift and even Kathy will take her blame in whatever happened to but I think Kathy revered and respected my mom through to the bitter end and and she's been there for me and so has Brian and Megan and just everybody else, you know, my cousin Susie, my cousin Cindy, all those people have been there for me. So I am going to focus on the people who have been there for me. But every now and again, Joe will come bring up somebody and say, don't you think it's ill-mannered for so-and-so to not have even called you? And I'm like, who's that? Oh, God. Okay, well, they've been long from my mind anyway, so just keep them there. 
Just four more boxes to pack and I'm done with this part of my labor. Uh, Joe is still setting up the machine on the liters or the 32 ounces. Um, Damien's been staying with us since the 30th. He goes back on the 5th to Northern California, back to his job, and then school starts in the fall. This is the first opportunity that he's had to come down to be with Jada since uh, my mom passed. These young men that are in Jada's life, they've been in her life since ninth grade. And they also viewed my mom as a grandma because she had that $20 handshake with all of them. <laughs> Whenever they would visit her with Jada, she would shake their hands and Jada would tell them, look, don't carry on and act indecent and go, oh, grandma, thank you. Because grandpa doesn't know that grandma's giving you this money. So Damien's staying with us because he can't go home because the mom and the stepdad are separating. And it would get pretty volatile if Damien were there because... According to Damien, the mom said the stepdad hit her. And so this has been going on since ninth grade. I don't know about the hitting, but the separating part. Since Damien was in ninth grade, every new year, Jada would be weeping, saying that, you know, Jada, um, Damien's not going to be at school because the mom is moving and they're going to move him to a different school system or blah, blah, blah. Well, it never happened, and it looks like it's finally happened, and I feel sorry for his little sister because she's going to be a senior at that school that Jada graduated from, which is an awesome school, and she's going to have to move to some other school. I remember being a, a senior having to move from Belize to America, and it sucked because I don't have that school as my alma mater because whenever I tell people I went there, and they're like, oh, but you didn't graduate from there. Then I graduated from Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson High School here in California, which is an awesome high school um, that a lot of influential people have graduated from. But um, nothing like saying that you graduated from St. Catherine's Academy in Belize, you know? So, because that was like the best school when I was growing up, and I think it's still one of the best schools now. Um, yeah. So we're going to do a barbecue. I'm convincing Joe to do the barbecue on Sunday, which is tomorrow, rather than Monday for the 4th of July, because um, I want to show how he does his chicken and his, and his ribs, because a lot of people just tend to put it straight on the grill, and then it burns on the outside and doesn't cook on the inside, especially the chicken. But somebody at the church showed Joe a little trick that he does all the time. And I said, let's show that for the 4th of July video at the, at the channel, and then put up a regular video the next Monday. And... Um, so I think I have him convinced because we make so much that we can have leftovers on the 4th of July and then he, he doesn't have to work on the 4th of July. So if someone invites us out, like let's say Leah invites us to come to the pool or something, we have that freedom to go do that, you know? So anyways, back to packing, guys. I wish you were here helping me pack. Sugar, you're right. This job is so tedious, though. <sighs> I really wish something else would work out for me to where I can be doing things I enjoy doing. <laughs> it's Saturday evening and I'm home. It took longer than we anticipated to do those bottles today because there were only 500 of each. And whenever you're doing a small quantity like that, you really can't afford to have any bad ones. And so you really need to run more to let the machine even pick up some speed and really does what it's supposed to do. But we're done. I just have to pack those um, 32 ounces on Tuesday while Joe sets up for the water bottles. I know those water bottle people are going to be screaming because they think that we're going to start it the minute they say go. Um, there's a tone that the one guy has, the one that used to come before the nicer guy took over. I told him that I needed a deposit. So I only have half the product in here. That's my sister calling from Belize. Hold on guys, hold on, hold on. I am so grateful to have Viber because without it, I would not be able to speak to my sister while she's on this trip in Belize. So um, anyways, coming back to that water guy, what I was telling you guys before the phone rang. The first guy that was coming, I told you guys, he kind of grates on our nerves. Well, he wrote a letter to his boss and the letter read like this. Um, go ahead and cut the uh, check for half, you know, the deposit check for half of the bill because Joel went over there and he confirmed that they are working on our bottles. I'm like, are you for real though? Your bottles have been on my floor for at least six weeks. I should charge you storage because you took so long to get your artwork cleared up. I know you're going to talk about, oh, they are getting to work on our bottles for real. I mean, is that what they want to do is come in here and just check on us? What we've done, the order is for 25,000 pieces, but they only have 12,000 pieces on the floor. We've asked them for half of the 12,000 pieces, not half of the whole 25, because if this 12 gives us a headache, 
we're gonna print this cut our losses and move on they just don't know that so anyways before my, my sister was calling because I had called her before I turned on the camera because my dad called in he's in Belize too he went like a few days after the funeral he went because one of his old mentors passed away and then he wanted to go take care of business yada yada but he called me today and he upset me so much because and I know he's grieving but you know people have to understand that all of us are grieving at a different degree and we grieve in our own way and if me and my siblings are being mindful of each other and how we're grieving and not to get on each other's nerve daddy should do the same thing so anyways he calls me up and he's all like uh, did you go to the grave I'm like no and he says when last have you been to the grave and I said when she was buried and he goes hmm and I said daddy it's not like I haven't told you and mommy all my life I don't do graves I don't visit graves I just don't if I believe what I believe about Christ and God and everything else then I know mommy's not in that grave so you'll never see me turn up at a grave I could understand if my siblings want to get together on mommy's birthday or Mother's Day or Christmas or whatever and say could we all meet there and just congregate and just talk about mom and just have a moment I'll do that but not for me to just go sit there on top of that tomb and talk to mom you know if I believe that mom can hear me then she can hear me right here and so just that, that's just how I am I mean they know that about me I'm not cold-hearted you know so he was mad he was just like he's coming back the end of July right so that's right around Jory's birthday now there are a lot of birthdays that are coming up Joshua had a birthday since mommy died he was June 18th Tracy had a birthday July 1st yesterday since mommy died um, my nephew Louis which is my older brother's son will have a birthday July 9th uh, uh, my uncle Roger will have a birthday July 28th Jory will have a birthday July 29th. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? I will have a birthday August 14th, and my older brother will have a birthday September. Remember, we had his 50th birthday last year. Oh, I wish mommy was here to celebrate my 50th with me. But he's all like, do you plan on having a party for your 50th? And I'm like, I can't even think that far. Honestly, I can't. And so he's like, well, I don't think you should because the normal thing with grieving, it should be a year that you don't do anything fun for a year. I'm like, Bishwa, are you crazy? I'm like, what if my mom dies on June 7th and I adhere to that foolishness about not doing anything fun for a year, but I come down with cancer today and I have six months, then I would have done nothing fun and then die? I was like, no, that doesn't work for me. You can come in, it's a vlog. <gasps> Joe has had a rough week. He had sore throat, then he has this annoying cough, now he's got the hiccups. Oh boy. So, who are you talking to? Yeah. Who, who are you talking to, your mom? My mama. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's like trying to put all these old-timey biblical stuff on me. I'm like, I'm like, Joe, mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to have a party because I'm, I'm supposed to grieve for a year. So am I supposed to wear a black cape? Or a black dress or a, let me, uh, let me tell you a shroud or something, uh huh? If I die today, uh -huh. and you are gonna party tomorrow, you're gonna party. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Joe, come peek in so they see you. I hate when you talk off camera and they don't see you. Come peek in, peek in at the lens. <coughs> you guys see Joe? Mm, peek I guess in, baby. I, gotta get lower. <laughs> I have the camera on a stand on my bed and I'm holding the legs because I don't want it to drop. Hey, folks, I'm not feeling too good right now. I know. He's I been sick all week. You've been sick all week, baby. I, know. I hope you don't give it to me when you're done because you know when you're uh, like stressed out. Don't take me a shower on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can, we, can we watch you take a shower? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, my vlog would take off. <laughs> I, might make, I, might make, I might make some money. <laughs> <laughs> gross guys you guys are gross <laughs> so anyways I, I just you know I'm not gonna stay mad for long because I know he's grieving too but I'm like look you're the patriarch in the family that's left now you've got four kids you should be here to help us through this you shouldn't have run home to Belize that quickly now he's there he's lonely in that house because Uncle Roger's not always there you know he's grieving all by himself my friend Mark is calling me through Facebook saying your dad's like off his rockers right now and why did he come so quickly you know because every time he goes to Belize he's with my mom and I said I just told him why don't you just cut your trip short and come back home come back home when Tracy comes back home in the middle of July just come back home so my brother goes on some trip tomorrow and he's not going to be in cell um, uh, connection so I worry about that but he said he'll be back on Monday and then he'll come up next weekend so 
<sighs> guys, it's it's been rough. I haven't shared half of what's going on with you guys. None of us are fighting over money or anything like that, but it's just that everybody wants to dictate to you to tell you how you're supposed to feel, when you're supposed to feel it. And like you say, sugar, grieving is forever. You know, my grandmother grieved her daughter that died in 59 at age six from diphtheria. She grieved that little girl all her life. And I know I'm gonna miss my mom forever and ever and ever, but the grief will lighten up as we go along because I've grieved other people that I didn't think I was gonna get over. My uncle Les, I never thought I was gonna get over that. My grandma, my grandpa, Aunt Grace and Aunt Tylene, Jada's dog, Willow, my dog when I was a kid, Bunny. I mean, I've grieved a lot of people that I never thought, people and, and, and animals that I never thought I was gonna get over. But for the most part, the people that have called me have been so kind. I have a friend, um, they, his dad used to live opposite the street over there where Anne Marie and them live. And I called him to tell him and he was just like, thank you for including me on this, Barbara. You know I understand how you feel because I was there for him when his mom died. Like in 08, we were there. Joe used to go pick his mom up off the floor whenever she would fall and stuff because he lived in Washington. So he was always grateful. Come, it's a vlog. Huh? I have some chisme for you. Chisme? It has to be off camera chisme. Off camera, okay, show them your hair. Your hair looks cool today. It's kind of big. Yeah, she's having trouble with one of her eyes. It just started leaking. I don't know what happened. What's wrong with it? I didn't want you guys to get motion sick, so I kind of paused just now when, well, I'm gonna cut out that piece just now when Jada sat on the bed and the, the whole camera rocked and everything. So, oh, by the way, guys, pray for me because I'm getting ready to rebuild my website and I am so scared. I should have built my website, built, I should have built my website a long time ago with WordPress, but I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to learn something new. And I'm not that kind of person where I know I don't want to learn things new. It's just that I have so much that I have to learn. And, um, and I met another YouTuber that has given me like a lot of good information. And she's all like, if you want to get verified with YouTube, you need to put your, um, Jada moved again, guys. <laughs> You need to put your link your website to your YouTube and I'm like I can't link it because I can't put the HTML in that program that I built it in. She goes like abandon all of that crap right there and use WordPress. So I've spent this entire week watching WordPress tutorials and none of them, none of them are under an hour long. They're like an hour 37, hour 52, two hours, three hours, four, five hours long. I was like sometimes I fall asleep listening to it. But I think I got a grasp on what I need to do, but I just need to find a good theme, you know, to build my stuff. And once I start building it, I have to finish it in that one day because my site's going to be down. You know, I won't be able to sell my books. So, um, but I have to. I really and truly have to, especially if I want to start selling more stuff at my site. I have to use a better shopping cart, you know, to where I can go ahead and sell more products, you know, stuff like that. So... I took down all the powdered ricardo because I don't have mommy to go to Belize to get them for me anymore. So forget y'all. I took that down. Mm-mm. <laughs> she was laughing. So um, I think maybe I'll start build. I don't know. We might do 4th of July tomorrow instead of the 4th of July. We might just have leftovers on the 4th of July because um, we're kind of like hungry for the stuff that we want to eat. <laughs> So I'm going to do a show on this macaroni salad and if I can do it tomorrow, then I could upload it early 4th of July morning and you guys could have that to do. So we'll see. Anyways, let me go get the cheese from Jada and I'll see you guys in a little bit. We came to the outdoor swap meet guys. It's Sunday morning, July 3rd. Joe needs to buy tape for the tape guns and I need to buy a charger for my phone. I'm making sure I have money before I go in because I'm the one that's giving Joe this treat today. All right, so... This is hella crazy. This is a booth right here that has all these weapons right here. Look at this. Anyone can pick up any of these things and do what they want to do. Oh my goodness. This is video. Bond. James Bond. Can't be a black James Bond. Not James. James. James Bond. <laughs> no, that's the way they say it to be all fancy. Huh? Picture, my son, okay? You're just a hater because you can't look as cute as my baby. <laughs> so Jory, well, backlighting Jory, backlighting. Jory is a groomsman in a co-worker's wedding and um, they have to do a fancy dance too. Do you, you know your dance? It's not really fancy. But I don't know. Well, it's a dance. Anything that's a dance is fancy to me because I can't dance. So twerking's, a da twerking's fancy? <laughs> twerking's fancy too. Mm -mm. You know twerking, uh, Belize made that up originally, right? Well, everything, every song you guys dance to be a sad song, just like... 
I remember grandma. Twerk, twerk, <laughs> twerk, twerk, twerk. So I'm gonna follow him outside to try to get some still shots. Cause he is so gorgeous today. Don't touch anything. Everything will put white on you. When the red button is on? Yeah. Okay. Okay guys, see I'm doing it. Back on the boat. Splash. Splash? Yeah.